So what do you get when you take an eclectic group of sixth graders, each with a unique personality, and each socially awkward, put them in a regional spelling bee? Well, you get a riotous ride complete with audience participation and music. We, of course, are talking about the community player of Salisbury's latest production, 25th Annual Putnam Spelling Bee, and we are happy to welcome the director of this production. This is Jake Brittingham to Historic Studio D. Thanks for being here. Yep, thank you for inviting me here. Uh, I was really excited when I heard that we were going to do this, and I, I love this show, so talking about it, best thing. Oh, awesome. thank you. Thank you. So so let's talk about your show. Um, just give us an overview. What is, what is it about? Well, so this is a little different than most shows. There is no real plot outside of you've got everyone trying to vie for the crown, be that top speller. The show comes from how the characters interact with each other and how they overcome their hardships that they get from their family, from pressure from outside sources, or even just intermingling with other students that are at the spelling bee. So you get a lot of comedy in how they interact and how they work with each other to just kind of overcome and who's going to be the top speller. So what made you guys choose this specific play? So this play I chose because when we were selecting, it was during peak COVID season. And the beauty of this show is that it has a small cast, it has a very easy set, it's a big character show, so you have everyone really portraying their characters in this over-the-top fashion. You can do it almost anywhere. You can do it if you had to live stream it. So that was one of the main factors behind it. And also, I love this show myself. There's a couple songs in here I've done in the past that I've actually won a couple competitions with. Mm. So it's got, a, it's got a lot in my own heart for yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah. So talk about the cast. Oh, the cast is wonderful. Uh, you have amazing singers. You have amazing physical comedians. I mean, we have people doing uh, handstands, backflips. Uh, one actress actually gets held upside down, and she's still singing her oh heart out <laughs> upside down. <laughs> this cast, no matter what I threw at them, they were like, we're going to learn this. I mean, before they even came in, they didn't know how to tap. And I said, we're going to workshop. You all are going to learn how to tap. So we were doing little sessions about how to teaching me how to tap. Absolutely amazing. I could not have a better cast. Awesome. Jay, talk to me about the differences about directing a musical rather than actually directing a regular play. Oh, man, a musical, a lot harder than, than a regular play, <laughs> yeah. let me tell you that. Uh, just making sure that everyone's vocal parts are in harmony with each other and just making sure that everyone can really nail the character. And this show is particularly difficult because you got to hit the notes, but you also have your character voice. So you have some people singing in these really nasally accents, but they still got to hit those high notes. And Ooh. there are plenty of high notes in this show. <laughs> Um, and on top of that, you have to still be able to have all that projection and all that power while, like, as I said, you're upside down still <laughs> trying to sing. Well, with a, with, a, with, a, with a regular show, or as we like to call it, kind of a straight play, um, you know, there's a lot more calm behind it. There's other kind of tricks that you got to use for it, but I would say that the difficulty is a lot lower and it's a lot lower stress level than what you're doing with a musical. Mm -hmm. So what do you hope the audience will take away from the production? Oh, I hope they learn a couple new words. We got some <laughs> really nice words for this show. But really, it just comes down to, you know, just walk away with how it was to be a kid. Uh, you know, when you ha you're trying to please your parents, or you're trying to prove something for yourself at all ages. I mean, these kids, specifically in the second act, they really start to have kind of stressful moments. And as we have in the show, the, their costumes start to break down, their, mm. their voices start to crack, the stress just really gets to them as they, they're so close to winning that, that trophy. And it's one of those things where it kind of takes you back to, you know, when you're in, on the little league sports teams, you know, you're trying so hard. And you know, whether you win or lose, you, you, it's really the journey and, and all the stuff that you experienced along the way. When and where can we see this play? So it is at Warwick Community College. Mm -hmm. We have them uh, ten, tonight at 7.30. It's going to be Saturday at 2.30 as well as 7.30. And then next week on Friday night at 7.30 and then another Saturday matinee at 2.30. Sounds like a great time. Jake Brittingham with the Community Players of Salisbury. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you all for having me here as well. Yeah. Well, we had a lot of fun learning about the Community Players of Salisbury's production of 25th Annual Putnam Spelling Bee, which kicks off tonight at Warwick Community College. And we're going to get a preview of the show in just a moment. But first, we'd like to introduce you to Joshua Smith. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Great. I want to have you introduce us to these two young yeah. 
yeah, ladies. so uh, this is Elena Troxel, and this is Susan Upton, two wonderful friends and co-stars of the show with a bunch of others that couldn't be here with us today, unfortunately, but uh, it's been a lot of fun getting to know these two and getting to know everybody else and sure. working on what's been a really fulfilling show. So how long have you been with the community players? So I actually started with them back when I was in seventh grade, and hmm. then I worked with them until 2010 and spent some time in college and in New York City, and I just moved back here in October, and oh. now I'm back here for the foreseeable future. So this is my first show back after being gone for... 12 years now. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. so it's been a while. All right. So, Elena, talk to me a little bit about being on stage. Do you get nervous? Um, well, I've been doing theater for a long time. It's not so much nervous as it's like the anticipation and excitement of it. You feel like little butterflies in your stomach. It's kind of like an adrenaline rush once you get out there. But, I mean, every now and then I'll get a little bit nervous. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and Susan, uh, can you talk a little bit about um, what you're looking forward to most in this show? Oh, well, I can't wait to hear the actual audience there laughing at all the jokes. Yeah, because we think it's funny, but it's nice to hear that confirmation. <laughs> That's always a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Joshua, um, you're going you're gonna to sing a couple songs for us. Yes. But, but it's going to be a little different. Can you explain? Yeah, so we the first one we're going to sing is called an I Love You Song, and that is actually from the wonderful mind of... Olive Ostrovsky, who Elena plays, um, and this is a dream that she's having. You're only going to see a little cut of it. You'll have to come to see the show to see the whole thing. Um, and then after that, I believe we're going to do another song that I sing that is a big moment for my character. He is uh, doing his community service, and he's had a change of heart before he didn't care about the students. Now he does, and he's very excited to give some comfort to them. So you guys are just going to tease everyone yeah, so they'll come see the show. Yeah, just a little tease, just a little, okay. just a little bit, and then you'll have to come and see the rest. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's hear it for the community players of Salisbury. Take Thank it away. You. 